I rejoiced with those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty! Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Teach me, Lord, the way of your decrees, that I may follow it to the end. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant to your church the Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes from above. Let nothing hinder your word from being freely proclaimed to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that we may serve you in steadfast faith and confess your name as long as we live. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 126 When the Lord restored the captives to Zion, we were like dreamers. Then our mouths were filled with laughter, and our tongues with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the dry gulches of the Negev. Those who sow with weeping will reap with joyful shouts. The one who walks along weeping carrying a bag of seed to sow will come back again with joyful shouts carrying his sheaves. The Word of the Lord. A reading from Judges chapter 4. After Ehud died, once again the people of Israel committed evil in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who ruled in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Herosheth Hagoim. Again the people of Israel called out to the Lord because Jabin had 900 iron chariots. He brutally oppressed the people of Israel for 20 years. Deborah, a woman, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at that time. She would sit under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the people of Israel would come to her for judgment. She sent for Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kedesh in Naphtali. She said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, has commanded, Go and march to Mount Tabor, and take with you ten thousand men from Naphtali and Zebulun. I will lure Sisera, commander of the army of Jabin, to you, at the stream Kishon, along with his chariots and his horde, and I will give him into your hand. But Barak said to her, If you go with me, I will go. But if you do not go with me, I will not go. She answered, All right, I will go with you. But because of the way you are going about it, the honor will not be yours. The Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah got up and went with Barak to Kadesh. Barak called up the forces of Zebulun and Naphtali to meet at Kadesh. Ten thousand men went up on foot, and Deborah also went up with him. It happened that Heber the Kenite had separated himself from the other Kenites, who were the descendants of Hobab, the brother-in-law of Moses, and he had set up his tent out by the oak tree in Za'ananim near Kadesh. When Sisera was told that Barak, son of Abinoam, had gone up to Mount Tabor, Sisera led out all his chariots, 900 iron chariots, and all the people who were with him from Herosheth Hagoyim, and they came to the stream Kishon. Deborah said to Barak, Get up, today is the day that the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Is not the Lord going ahead of you? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor, and ten thousand men followed him. 
The Lord threw Sisera, all his chariots and all his troops, into confusion with the edge of the sword of Barak. So Sisera got down from his chariot and fled on foot. Barak pursued the chariots and the troops as far as Harosheth Hagoim. Sisera's whole army fell by the edge of the sword. Not a single man was left. Sisera, meanwhile, fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, because there was peace between Jabin king of Hazor and the household of Heber the Kenite. Jael came out to meet Sisera and said to him, This way, my lord, come here to me, do not be afraid. So he turned aside to her, went into her tent, and she hid him with a covering. He said to her, Give me something to drink, please, just a little water, because I am thirsty. She opened a skin of milk and gave him some milk to drink. Then she covered him up. After that, he said to her, Stand at the door of the tent, and if anyone comes and asks you, Is there anyone here? Say no. But then Jael, wife of Heber, took a tent stake, and gripping a hammer in her hand, she came to Sisera quietly and drove the stake through his temple, right through into the ground. Sisera had been fast asleep, exhausted. Now he was dead. When Barak arrived in pursuit of Sisera, Jael came out to meet him. She said to him, Come in, and I will show you the man you are looking for. So he went with her, and there he was. Sisera was lying there dead, with the tent stake through his temple. So on that day God subdued Jabin king of Canaan before the people of Israel, and the hand of the Israelites pressed harder and harder against Jabin king of Canaan until they cut down Jabin king of Canaan. The Word of the Lord. A reading from Acts chapter 14. The same thing happened in Iconium, Paul and Barnabas entered the Jewish synagogue and spoke in such a way that a great number of both Jews and Greeks believed. But the Jews who refused to believe stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. Paul and Barnabas stayed there a long time, speaking boldly for the Lord, who confirmed the message of his grace by granting them the ability to perform miraculous signs and wonders. But the people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews, and some with the apostles. When there was a plot by both Gentiles and Jews, together with their rulers, to mistreat and stone them, they found out about it, and fled to the Lycaonian cities of Lystra and Derbe, and to the surrounding countryside. There they kept on preaching the good news. In Lystra, there was a man who was sitting down because he had no strength in his feet. He had never walked because he was lame from birth. When he was listening to Paul as he was speaking, Paul looked at him closely and saw that he had faith to be healed. Paul said in a loud voice, Stand up on your feet. And the man jumped up and began to walk. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices, saying in the Lycaonian language, The gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes, because he was the main speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and garlands to the city gates, because he wanted to offer sacrifices along with the crowds. But when the apostles Paul and Barnabas heard about this, they tore their clothes and rushed into the crowd, shouting, Men, why are you doing these things? We too are men with the same nature as you. We are preaching the good news to you, so that you turn from these worthless things to the living God, who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. In past generations he allowed all the nations to go their own ways, Yet he did not leave himself without testimony of the good he does. He gives you rain from heaven and crops in their seasons. He fills you with food and fills your hearts with gladness. Even though they said these things, they had a hard time stopping the crowds from sacrificing to them. The Word of the Lord. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness come to my relief. Spare us, Lord, from the lies of the devil and the attacks of our conscience. Comfort and save us in your patient compassion. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Guide us, Lord, to the wisdom of your word and the power of your promises. Take away our confusion and doubt. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Hear us, Lord, when we come to you in prayer. Make us confident to take you at your word and to follow you in faith. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Empower us, Lord, to walk in your ways and live in your truth. Fill us with your love, that we may love you and one another. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Almighty God, by your Spirit, the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified. Receive our prayers for all members of your Holy Church, that in their vocations and ministries they may truly serve and honor you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen.